in a full-blown SHTF, this would mean starvation. Hey folks, so I've experienced a disaster on my little place here. And in a full-blown grid down SHTF, this could mean star uh, starvation. Over the past few weeks actually, I've been working anywhere from 60 to 70 something hours a week. Uh, so I've had little time to get out here and tend the garden. Uh, not as much as I would like because I've been I've been pushed really hard at work to work as much overtime as possible. Um, so that's usually only left me one day a week that I can get outside and do anything in the yard and in the garden. As a result, uh, the deer got into the garden this week while I was at work and they've just trashed it. Now, bear in mind that I haven't been able to get out here and weed like I'd originally thought I would a while back so it was overgrown but they the deer have gotten out here and it looks like some other animals too I know I found some deer tracks deer droppings rabbit droppings I spooked a rabbit last weekend um, but the damage is is far beyond what I would have thought in fact I, I may not be able to salvage much out of the garden this year so I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to show you some of the damage. Bear in mind, a lot of this, these overgrown weeds, I, I was never able to pull them up. So we'll set that, side, that aside for the, uh, for the moment. But let me flip the camera around and show you what's happened. All right, so as I've said in some of my previous videos, the, the garden has become overgrown because I haven't had time to... Uh, time off to come out here and weed it and maintain it like I should But let, let me show you what's going on here This by the way, this is the area where I had the broccoli and my sweet potatoes. I had my okra right here uh, And as you can see it's severely overgrown, but check this out These are all Deer droppings believe it or not And I know it looks like rabbit droppings but it's the wrong color, the wrong shape. Plus, I'll show you something else here in a second. But it's just everywhere. Uh, my okra was planted right here. Um, they're completely gone. There's nothing left of them. Uh, my corn, and again, there's some droppings everywhere and I know there's been rabbit in here too so it's not just deer it's, it's rabbit too but my corn was trampled over even my experimental circular patches have been knocked over and another way I can tell aside from the color and the shape of these droppings another way I can tell that they are deer and not rabbit If you look on top of the corn, there's some scattered around here. There we go. On top of the corn. On top of the corn. Last time I checked, rabbits can't uh, can't walk that high. <laughs> uh, there were my peas were right here. My snap peas. They didn't do anything. Uh, my onions were right here they didn't do anything either here i had bush beans which were coming up really good the deer have just ate them down to nothing they're, they're gone just like my okra over here the potatoes are still here although there's deer tracks right in the middle of the mound so i should be able to salvage some of those there's my squash that i haven't had time to get out here and harvest um, my cucumbers here. 
completely gone. There's nothing left of them. Nada. There's nothing in here. They ate everything down. But here's where the real damage begins. And uh, a couple of these branches fell down and they, uh, they trampled them down, broke some of them. There's no tomatoes on this plant. All these tracks here. They knocked this uh, tomato cage over. Not a single tomato on that cage. Now, it was loaded. All of these tomatoes were loaded with green tomatoes. Not a single tomato on here. Well, the one. They left me one. How generous. More tracks. Here's another vine, uh, tomato vine that they trampled. They just knocked it over, walked all over it. Not a single tomato left on it. They stripped that one clean. There's a few left on that, that one. It needs pruning and trimming up really, really badly. This one, check this out. This is the cage. They just completely bent the cage over, trampled it. Not a single tomato on there. So some of these I might be able to salvage. I don't know. But my beans, check this out. I put this up against the bottom to keep them from eating them down to the ground. But look what they did above that. Completely ate everything up. All the way up to right about here. And that's where the, what they left me. But uh, along this main run, they stripped it clean. The backside's even worse. There's nothing there. So I'm going to get a few seeds off of this. Uh, and that's probably going to be about it. Here is my, here are my carrots. As you can see, mixed in with all these, this grass and weeds. They haven't touched any of that, it looks like. But everything else has been destroyed. And there you go. There's more evidence. There's another pile out here. There's another pile out here. So they've completely trashed my garden. I don't know that I'm going to get anything else out of this except for maybe a few potatoes, maybe some carrots. And if I'm lucky, I might be able to salvage a couple of the tomato plants and get some production out of them. But all this other is just gone, I think. There might be some sweet potatoes in the ground. I don't know. I got to look for them, check them out. I don't think the corn's going to do much more this year. The ears didn't even get big enough to harvest. All right, so between my 60 to 70 hour work week and then coming home to do the, the usual things, you know, clean the house, wash, uh, wash clothes, cook dinners, things like that, um, I've had almost no time to manage the garden. And except for coming out here a couple of times to check on a couple of things earlier this week, and it didn't look that bad then. I haven't been out there. Um, this is actually a disaster for me. And, but it's fortunate that right now I can still go to the store. I can, uh, I can still fall back on food storage if necessary. But if this were an actual grid down uh, major SHTF, this would mean starvation. Uh, this could be life-threatening. This is why we we try to start these things now. You know, you got learning curves, you've got uh, challenges, you're going to have losses, obviously, and you need to learn. You need to learn from these mistakes now while you have the grocery stores and your food storage to fall back on. And obviously during a grid down SHTF, I wouldn't be spending 60, 70, 80 hours a week 
at a, at a job. However, I would be spending that time building fences, uh, building hutches, coops, hunting, fishing, foraging, uh, doing all manner of things. So uh, watching what's going on around me, uh, working on security, things like that. So there's, there's all manner of things that I would still be working on that would take me away from the garden. This is why you can't do everything alone. You can't do this completely on your own. You need help. Uh, while I'm out dealing with one thing, scavenging, hunting, fishing, security, whatever, whatever you want to call it, in this case, working my day job, this garden was being untended. And I didn't, I knew the deer were getting into it, but I didn't have the time to spend here at home to try to put a fence back up around it to, to try to secure the garden. Um, and I've paid the price for that which is not something I could really avoid in this case. But it just goes to show in a, in a SHTF, um, this would be a major disaster. So what I've got left, there's two or three tomato plants that weren't trampled. I might be able to prune and restake and save a couple of them. I don't know. I won't know until I get out there. The beans are probably gone for the year. Uh, everything else is gone with the exception of maybe the potatoes there. Now the tomato plants, the herbs, and the uh, potatoes in the buckets over here, those weren't touched, fortunately. So I still have those. But can you imagine, just imagine if the entire economy collapses and you you have nothing to rely on except your garden, your hunting and foraging, and your food preps. This would be it for the year. You would be, you'd be dead in the water with your garden. Um, there's some things you still have time to replant. You might be able to get a few more beans in before summer's over. Uh, you might be able to plant some other things. You can do some foraging, some hunting, some fishing. But half the... Uh, Half the gardening year is gone, at least the spring and summer part. Half that is gone. And it's, right now, I, I gotta be honest, right now I'm really frustrated, I'm upset. But I'm trying to look at the brighter side of, the, of this. I mean, that, that, I put a lot of work into all of that and it's just gone now. I'm, again, I can salvage a little bit maybe, but I don't know how much I can produce and off of what's left. I had a three day weekend this weekend. I was looking really, I was really looking forward to getting out here and tending the garden, weeding it and working in it and trying to harvest some stuff. And, and I don't know, it's just, my job gave me a three day weekend too damn late. So, this, I don't really know what else to say. This, this is a failure for the year, a major failure on my part. Um, and again, it's not necessarily circumstances I can control. It is what it is. I had to be at work. I, that was non-negotiable. I just hate that while I was away working for somebody else, a lot of the work that I had put in for myself here at home was just destroyed. I doubt I'll replant anything this year. I really doubt it. I mean, I could. I could try to uh, plant some more beans, plant some more okra, uh, maybe put out a couple of fresh tomato plants. I could try doing that, but I already know that my job is going to be working me 50, 60, 70 hours a week for the rest of the summer, most likely. So any plants that I try to buy and put out in the garden now are just gonna get ate up again until 
I figure out some way of securing the garden from the deer, which have already jumped one fence to get to the garden. Uh, I don't think adding a second fence around the garden would be sufficient at this point. <sighs> because this, this whole garden, this whole part of my yard is fenced in. The deer have obviously jumped that. I'm not sure which direction of the yard they've come in from. I've got a trail cam up in the yard. I've caught deer in the yard, but I haven't seen what direction they're coming from or where they're jumping over the fence. Um, so I've got to figure all of that out. I'm thinking about, except for the potatoes, which I'll try to harvest, I'm gonna keep an eye on the uh, carrots. Maybe I can get something from those and the rest of the tomatoes. But I'm thinking about just leaving the garden as is trying to move my camera around to try to figure out, because I've only got one trail camera. Uh, and I want to try to move that camera around and see if I can figure out where the deer are coming into my yard at and see if I can do something to, I don't know, block it from that direction maybe. I, I gotta be honest though, I'm at this point I'm really disgusted. And this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, I've, I've not had deer destroy my garden like this before, but it's not the first time I've had my job overload me at critical times where I, when I needed to be here working on th some things, it was like they were going out of their way to keep me as busy as possible. And then everything I was working on at home were, was falling through, so. That's a, a stress point there for me, a, a serious frustration issue. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that, that again, this is a disaster for me. The garden's probably done for the most part for the year. And I was planning on putting up a bunch of stuff this year and my job just got in the way, believe it or not. Now granted, the, the money from the job is good because I can put a little bit of money back. I can buy food storage and things like that. But in terms of actually trying to build more resilience here at home, my job got in the way of that. And this is one reason, just so you folks understand, this is one reason why I've been reluctant to add any kind of livestock to my homestead here. Because my job has a habit of doing this. We'll go for three, four, five, maybe even six months where I'm working just a, a 40, maybe a 50 hour week. And then it seems like when production is peaking here at home or when I need to be here at home the most, that's when they try to slam me with two weeks worth of work in one week. Um, so again, that's that's not something I can do much about right now. And it makes it hard for me to build a homestead here. Again, I'm not complaining about the job so much because the, the money is good, but it makes it very, very difficult to, to balance things out. Anyway, uh, this channel is about showing you the realities of what I'm going through and what we're dealing with. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat things. I'm not gonna lie and say, oh, I had a great harvest. The garden did wonderful. Um, when I have a, a failure or especially a major failure, I wanna show you guys that so that you learn from it the, as, as much as I do. You can learn from it the way I do. Um, man, this was... That was a lot of work out there. I really hate to see that trash like that. I may be putting a tree stand up in my yard uh, this fall and taking a deer with my crossbow. That may be something I need to do. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. I hope you folks are, are being active, trying to do as much as you can. Don't get discouraged if you have failures. Trust me, I've got a major failure right here. I am discouraged, but I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to look at the bright side of it and trying to make the best out of a bad situation. Um, 
So just keep trying. Do as much as you can. If you have a failure, I know it's discouraging. I know it's frustrating, but try to learn from it, adapt, overcome it next year. I'm, I'm gonna be thinking about this for the rest of the year. And I'm gonna be trying to come up with ways that I can adapt and prevent this from happening next year. Anyway, aside from that, that's all I've got. My potatoes are about ready to harvest in the buckets. So I'll probably be doing a video on those tomorrow. Um, but yeah, folks, stay busy. Keep prepping. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. Take care of yourselves and each other. Keep prepping. Don't let things, don't let failures and discouragement get you down. Do the best you can. That's all you can do. And until next time, folks, I'll catch you later.